Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and it's time to resume the wonderful Dominaria spoilers. And at this point, I think I'm releasing them at the same speed that uh, Wizards would have. <laughs> so, all right, we left off with Jaya herself, the famous uh, pyromancer from Dominaria. And so next up, we've got Jaya's Emulating Inferno. It's um, X Red Red Legendary Sorcery, so you can only cast it if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. Legendary lands do not count apparently. Uh, Jaya's Emulating Inferno deals X damage to each of up to three targets. Ooh! <laughs> Hello! Uh, by the way, you can't target the same target more than once. Um, so yeah, you, you can't say, oh, it's gonna be six, and then, ha <laughs> 12. But, um, that's a game rule. Like, honestly, if this was the judge document and they had to tell people that, that's sad. Uh, especially since this doesn't go to level one judges from what I heard. That's even sadder. But anyway, um, this is a really powerful spell, but it is flushed straight down the toilet when you consider that you need to have a legendary creature planeswalker on the field. I mean, just think about that. They just nuked your entire board, okay? Nothing's left except for lands. Oh, well, I just top decked in Lightning Inferno. Cool, and I have a ton of mana. I can take out their three remaining creatures. Oh, that's right. No, I can't. Because in order to cast this... I wouldn't go as far as saying you already have to be winning the game, but you have to at least have something on the field. This will not turn around the game. And of course, I could describe a lot of cards that way, but I don't know. Not not an X spell. That's going too far. You just you can't do that to an X spell. So I'm gonna have to give this one a thumbs down. Next up, Joyrus Familiar. It's a bird. Which, this just, there's already one called Judges Familiar, and this sounds just like it. Anyway, it's 4 cost 2, too, so I'm sure it's great. Uh, it's a flying uh, bird. Oh, artifact, too, by the way. And uh, historic spells you ca cast cost 1 less to cast. So, straight up. Very nice. Oh, it doesn't reduce its own cost. It's almost like this is a property of it when it's on the field. Hmm. Like, these rulings are just so bad. They're just so obvious. All right, next up we've got Joda Archmage Eternal and uh, costs one plus red, white, and blue. Awesome. Uh, and uh, Legendary Creature Human Wizard. I've never heard of him or her, but, uh, you know, whatever. I'm sure there's some story there. <laughs> so 4-3 Flying, that's pretty good, uh, especially for four. I mean, that's really good, but, you know, triple color, what are you going to do? Uh, but guess what? You may pay one of each mana cost rather than pay the mana cost for spells that you cast. That is broken okay this is like completely unfair i mean yeah you still gotta pay five it's not like you can pull this crap off on turn three or four in like legacy or modern or something but this is just as soon as you get there you just unleash hell this is basically tron 2.0 except with less reliability so i don't know will it you know ruin formats no but is it just inherently broken and unfair yes because it's just like oh uh, Ember, cool, cool. And you get the on-cast effect. That's the problem. Same with Ulamog. You get the on-cast effect because you're casting it. It's, it adds an alternative cause. It's not just, oh, put it onto the battlefield, which is, you know, also inherently broken. Oh, this is just aggravating. So, okay. Next one, Juggernaut. Uh, that's a reprint. Can't be blocked by walls. I didn't know that. But this is definitely a reprint. So... Uh, it costs 4 to 5, 3, and it has to attack each combat if able. I think, boy, I want to say it might have been Modern Masters, but I feel like this was actually in standard or, like, is right now. It might actually be. <laughs> Whatever. If I was doing this edited, I would check. All right, next up, Kamal's Druidic Vow. Oh, boy. Oh, green, green, uh, axe. I'm starting to see a theme here. Legendary Sorcery. I bet there's five of these. Uh, look at the top X cards your library. Oh god, here we go. You may put any number of lands and or legendary permanent cards with converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest in your graveyard. So, I mean, yeah, it's kind of free casting, but you also, like, had to pay for it. So it's more like replicated casting, but also, there's no guarantee this won't whiff. You know, you might just get garbage. Um, the land part is pretty cool, though. I mean, honestly, if you cast this for, like, three you would be expected to pull one land because about one third of your deck is land. So it's not like reliable, but if this was in a landfall deck, like, uh, I don't remember what I called it, but, uh, just my landfall deck from back when landfall was huge. Um, you could just absolutely just cast this for like 10 because you know, most of your land is on the field by like turn five or six with that deck. 
So you could bring anything with it and just cast your whole deck. I mean, this is so good that I would put it in a modern deck, except one, you'd have to actually pull this card. And two, you have to have a legendary permanent on the battlefield already. So I don't like it. I'm never going to like it. Legendary sorceries. I'm never going to like them and they're never going to be good because they're so inherently unreliable. This is just the dumbest idea ever. Oh, I hate it. Next up, Karn Scion of Urza, which just sounds like Kozilek Scion of Ugin. <laughs> I just, I kind of saw that while scrolling and I'm like, what? <laughs> anyway, it's four cost legendary planeswalker. Ooh, he's coming back as a planeswalker. How lovely. I don't know why he wouldn't, because he is one. Uh, oh, wait, no, I thought he gave up his spark too. I don't know. The, the story is confusing as hell. So legendary planeswalker Karn comes out Oh, for four colorless five loyalty. Wow, that is insane. Okay, so plus one, reveal the top two cards of your library. An opponent chooses one of them, put that card into your hand, and exile the other with a silver counter on it. Hmm. So negative one, put a card you own with a silver counter on it from <laughs> exile into your hand. So in other words, wait two turns and draw two. Uh, and then negative two, create a zero zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this <laughs> like it can't end there with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control uh that's dangerous i mean a, a miniature board wipe like a sweep would just take this out i mean that's kind of neat though i mean it, it could get big i mean especially with like treasure and stuff and the fact that he costs four this is pretty good i think we're looking at a 15 dollars planeswalker minimum here i mean it, it's just card draw it's colorless card draw we might be looking at a $25 Planeswalker here. I mean, you could put this guy in anything. And honestly, you if you put him in something that you aren't even running artifacts, just ignore his negative two. It's not even an alt anyway. That's a, honestly a little bit OP. I mean, I gotta say. All right, so we got Karn's Temporal Sundering. Oh boy, he's gonna break time. I can't wait for time travel in the story. That'll be fun. Uh, costs four plus blue plus blue. So I guess Karn's technically actually blue way down below he's living a lie he's he's not actually colorless he's blue he's blue leaning he's just in the closet anyway um legendary sorcery so it's useless worthless and never gonna work and uh target player takes an extra turn after this one return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand oh fun exile karn's temporal sundering so you get a little bonus i mean you know you take an extra turn and maybe get something out of the way to swing i mean that could be devastating it's six costs and it's legendary though so this is not a good spell. <laughs> Next up, Kazarov Sengir Pureblood, which of course is fake Latin for vampire. <laughs> All right, so it's a uh, five black black legendary four four flyer, so that already sucks. And uh, whenever a creature in opponent controls is dealt damage, put a one one counter on him. Ooh, that's like way better than when a creature dies. That's insane. I mean. The thing is, though, it's like it's simultaneous damage and then his multi-target damage doesn't count. And uh, I hate these rulings. I hate them. I hate cards like this. They're so confusing. But anyway, if you play th pay three plus a red, that's weird. Um, Kazarov deals two damage to target creature. Well, how convenient is that? So let's read this. Um, if Wait, wait a minute. Did I read this wrong? Would a creature... An opponent controls dull damage. Why would they say if Kazrov is dull damage? Who gives a shit? Anyway, at the same time that a creature... And oh, I get it. It's simultaneous. Should have read past the first four words, but I do not have that level of patience today. So, uh, let's see. If he's dull damage at the same time a creature and opponent controls dull damage, Kazrov must survive the damage to get the 1-1 counter. I know that. That's already a ruling on multiple other cards. That one's actually worth um, stating, though. Uh, let's see. His triggered ability triggers once for each creature dealt damage at one time. Okay, so it could be single source multiple. So un it's unlike player damage, which is like non-instanced or whatever. Uh, if a creature is dealt an amount of damage for each of something, that damage is dealt as one event. Okay, that I actually also knew. And his ability only triggers once. So that's cool. Yeah, it's it's a single calculation. It's the resolution after, like, the damage resulting from the ability or whatever. Okay, next up, Keldon Overseer, uh, two and a red. Uh, it's a 3-1, so that's pretty cool. It's kicker four, so, yeah, a lot of people have seven mana. Uh, human Warrior, haste when he enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Hello. Untap it against haste. 
basically act of treason. So, I mean, a 3 1 for 3 is really nothing special, but the kicker is insane, but you'll never have 7 mana. So, but with haste, though, and then haste on what you steal, like this could end the game for 7. So, I don't know. It's, it's okay. It's, it's not great. Uh, Keldon Warcaller, uh, one and a red, two, two, human warrior. Whenever it attacks, put a lore counter on target saga you control. And with, that would instantly trigger its ability if I remember how that works, which, uh, that's a bit of a stretch. All right, so Knight of Grace. Let's really cruise through these. Ooh, First Striker 2-2 two, two for two in white. Ooh, I like that. Hexproof from black. <laughs> oh, God. I, they were being really serious, apparently, when they said they're not going to print protection from color anymore. <laughs> so they've got Hexproof from black, which is kind of like protection from black, but complete shit. So <laughs> it can't be the target of black spells or abilities your opponents control. It can still be blocked by a black creature, and it can, uh, what, uh, be the target of... No, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm don't. i really fucking tired right now. All right, so it gets plus one attack as long as any player controls a black permanent. Wow, this is literally a knight of the KKK because that is just racism right there. But it's really cool that he would be a 3-2 first striker for two if they're playing something black. I mean, this, this could honestly like almost be a modern sideboard card. Almost. I mean, it's... Close, because I mean, three first strike for two, that's fast, it's good, and it's situational. I don't know, people usually put spells in the sideboard. All right, Knight of Malice. Oh boy, it's a one and a black, two, two, human knight, first strike. Here we go. <laughs> Hexproof from white, and it gets plus one as long as, okay, let's get this over with. Oh, I, I really honestly thought there would be more. <laughs> okay. Quendi, or Quende, 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 I don't know, some African dude. Uh, Pride of Femerev. All right. Uh, three and a white. Legendary creature, human knight, two, two, double strike. Uh, I could name like three better creatures. All right, so creatures you control with first strike have double strike. Now that's interesting. Um, that almost makes up for the fact that this sucks. Um, it, I mean, this dude, if you were to drop a boost spell on him, Holy crap. But the problem is, like, Fabled Hero is just plain better, but not in standard. So, I don't know. This could this could see some play. I could see it. All right. Let's see. Lich's Mastery. Yes. Lich Card. Lich's Mirror is some crazy stuff. Lich's Phylactery is nuts, which I don't think that's a card. I think it's a token. It's, it's a whole thing. Anyway, three black, black, black. Oh, Legendary Enchantment. Okay, so you can get some triggers off that. I like it already. Hexproof. You can't lose the game. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say I like this? I meant I hate it, and this is some bullshit. All right, whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. Just, just fuck it. If you drop this into the battlefield, just, just flip the fucking table and get it over with. This is absolute bullshit. Whenever you lose life, for each one life you lost, exile... Oh, this is literally Lich's Mirror or whatever. Or Lich, there's some other Lich card that does, like, exactly this. Oh, my God. So you have to exile... A permanent you control or a card from your hand or graveyard. Now, graveyard is a little rough. Um, let's see. When it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game straight up. So there, there is a card almost identical to this. I just don't remember which one it is. But I did a, an Overlook But Awesome on it because it is awesome. But this is so annoying. So annoying. So, 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 so annoying. I mean, the only way that you're going to win is if you nuke their entire graveyard and let's see, it says when you lose a life range of the exile permanent, you control. So all their permanents, including their lands and their entire hand and their entire graveyard. So you'd have to deal. I mean, just think about it, though. You deal 10 damage to them. Uh oh. <laughs> Not only did they just lose 10 life in case you can force them to sacrifice the enchantment, which I feel like it can't even be done in standard right now. Oh, this is. Uh, th oh, I don't know. I can't decide if this is good or not. I hate it but I love it, <laughs> but I also hate it. Oh, the problem is whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. I mean, this is going to be crazy in white, black life gain. And by the way, white, black life gain is still going to be a thing. Buy every single copy of that reservoir card, the, the 50 bomber that you can, and buy every single copy of Crested Sunbear that you can, because I know this costs six and is legendary, but like, oh man, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I thought of a creative way to kill this, but I don't think it'll work. You could, um, oh yeah, that is illegal now. Shoot. I was going to say, you could, you could do that, that gifting card, the thing or whatever. And then you like, 
you you uh, turned your uh, mirror your what, what the hell is that called mirage mirror turn it into a lich's mastery and then donate it to them legendary rule they lose the game instantly that'd be fun so wish I could do that all right so yeah I don't know this this thing's nuts I'm sure this card's gonna be like insanely expensive if it was an artifact it would be just outrageous I mean this would be so powerful. Um, I'm still trying to think. I mean, you couldn't, if you took control of this with Kefnets, I'm not even sure what the rules would be on that. I don't want to read all this crap either. So if you, if you want to pause it right now, too late. All right. Lanawar Scout. <laughs> one and a green, one, three. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield with a tap. That's kind of cool. I mean, if you, if you need to support massive amounts of uh, card draw, other than that, I think it's crap. All right. Let's see. Well, I mean, cause it costs two and it doesn't have haste. So is, is it really ramp? I mean, not really. Okay, Light Radon Bringer, uh, three and a white, white, legendary creature, angel, five, five, flying, first strike, lifelink. Yay, Gisela's back. <laughs> Other angels you control get plus one, plus one, have lifelink, who cares? Although a lot of cards uh, outside of standard can generate four, four angels. So this is nuts. This is absolutely nuts, crazy, and bonkers. Okay, the, I mean, it's five. I think... Gisela was five. She could have been four. I don't know, but this is five first strike with five toughness to back it up, flying and lifelink, and it boosts other angels and gives them lifelink. Okay, this card and this card right here. Lich's Mastery and Angels. Angels and Liches, they work together all the time. That makes perfect sense logically. I'm sure it'll fit with the lore and the storyline. So, damn, th this is probably from what I've seen going to be the most expensive card in the set. I know it costs five, but it's like, it's so good. Even if you don't have other angels, it's so crazy good. It doesn't have any way to protect itself, but I think there was a one cost white spell that would keep it alive. And I'm pretty sure that there's a one cost black spell that would bring this back to your hand if it dies. Or if it, I think it says if it leaves the battlefield or something like that. So Damn, Lyra ain't no joke. <laughs> All right, so that's a good one to end on because that's that's crazy. So uh, what do you think of these? They're getting nuts. I mean, there's nothing just like damn broken so far, quite except for that mass free caster from like three videos back. But some of these are going to be really annoying. But that's kind of the point. You know, put them in your deck and suddenly they're not annoying. <laughs> Funny how that works. So let me know what you think about these crazy spoilers. These were the most powerful by far so far. And I'm sure it's only going to get better slash worse depending upon your perspective. So hit that subscribe button. Don't miss the rest of these. And I will see you guys next video.